Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial lesson. In this one, I'm going to be going over some things in Philogic's PBR Painter Pro and give you a couple of quick tips to make your workflow a little bit better. Also, one other thing we're going to go over are some up and coming features for Blender 3.6. Really can't wait for that milestone to come out because there's a few things. Uh, one of those things is kind of like ghosting the chats in here is one of those um, suggestions that there's going to be real-time compositing. Just got to look into that. Some real-time compositing could hit Blender and mean something. But other than that, right now, the one of the big things in 3.6 is the fact that if you have multiple monitors, you're going to be able to, hypothetically, with this patch, take the code, the code inside. Well, it does it for you. But it's going to take, say, your 3D viewport right here. And then this is presumably your geometry nodes editor and it could be successfully open on another screen so that it can communicate back and forth effectively where before if you were to do, try to do that you would split all of these screens up and it wouldn't work the good part is that it's also supposed to not matter what the scale the resolution or the arrangement of those monitors are so in fact what that is going to allow you to do is once you pull out one of these windows, uh, say geometry nodes or another workspace, you can put it on another monitor. And so you can just go back and forth between the two and have the geometry nodes workspace as large as possible. And of course, when that milestone update um, happens, I will keep everybody up to date on that. And that is going to be a core update. All right, so back to blender let's get started now i am using 3.3 which is the lts version and so right now in philogic's pbr painter pro version 3.1 i've got a setup here i did this mech and i blocked this out with grid modeler so if you guys want to check that out i'll link that in the description you can make this it's really cool and really easy and you can make some really really complex shapes and things that would just take uh, oodles of time and just waste your life when you could be oh i don't know making money or drinking your favorite beverage <laughs> Or doing something. So anyways, if you come in here and you wanted to start painting this thing, then you're going to need to have a good workflow. And one of those things that you can do to achieve that is to save some colors in the color palette before you get going. So I've already added one here. And another thing I want to do, like while I'm actually painting, and I could just pull the teardropper up and I've got this mech here and I really like some of the colors that are on it so I'm gonna come over here and I'm in the tools workspace and once you clicked paint on Philogic's PBR Painter Pro and I've got tutorials on that oodles of those um, so you know feel free to search through that then what you would do is you come down the color palette and you would start adding these in so now if I press plus I've got these two very nice little military colors just kind of worked in and so i can just kind of keep rinse and repeating this process because i like this little silver right here as well and these are going to be really really difficult to match later on or on the fly while you're doing this so the better idea is if you're going to paint these colors in on you know whatever if you're adding them in with an image you're going to put cracks in let's just say i want to put in the cracks is very basic right and i go to this brown and i just want to go ahead and paint that and i can start painting in these nice uh, cracks and of course i don't have the strength all the way up so let's turn that up so you can definitely see that and i am painting an 8k so it looks really nice and then of course i with my workflow this is just the easiest way of doing it i can anchor that base custom layer it's a custom layer and then i can come over to the height channel as usual and i know i get tore up for this but I just drop the anchor on the height channel, add that, and now it's height, right? So I'm not playing around with it. Then I can adjust my opacity on that and make that look really beat up and make it look really good at the same time. So there's a lot you can do with that. So like I said, you just come in here and you've got these two colors for selection. So you can immediately come in here and start painting. And just remember, you switch between those with V and it, well, it should work. Sometimes it doesn't want to work, but V is supposed to be the hotkey for that. So you can switch back and forth. Oh, it's X. Fire me. I'm fired. I'm fired. So it's actually X. So if I want to uh, paint this in as uh, black, well, let's just grab this. 
Uh, let's go back to the tool workspace. There we go, tool workspace. I'm going to grab this silver color right here. And now I'll automatically be painting that silver in. And it'll have that kind of inset silver. And then the green outside will just kind of keep it where I want it. It's going to look really nice. Now, one other thing. Don't forget, when you're in here, you can scroll around over here to the fall off for your brush. If I can find it. I've got a scrunched up screen now. So you can get the fall off and you can, if you're doing decals, you know, you can set the brush shape here and this preset works really good. But if you come over here, you could change the angle down a little bit. So when you're painting, it doesn't bleed over the edges as much. And I think that's a very nice way to control it. So you don't have to worry about changing it up all the time. So anyways, I'm just going to paint here. You see it's not painting on this side at all. And that's because I was in the fall off area and I changed the angle down to below like 30. It defaults at 80 and if you just leave it there then it's not really efficient. And so I just wanted to kind of run through that with you guys. And I'm going to say this probably in every single video. I'm going to go back to the base layer. You have to click finish. You see the little asterisk there? It's exactly like the image asterisk that you would see uh, if you have painted something in Vanilla Blender. So you've got to come over here and you need to save that. And you can find some place. I've got a mech folder, which I've been dumping everything into. So I can just save this. And then, of course, it'll take a second and the little asterisk should disappear. Boom, it's gone. And I can pack that texture. Now, if I like what I've got here, remember you can also come in here and you can either export and or import and you can save that brush. So if I save this now and don't call it cracks, but just call it my new blender brush and hit enter. Let's see, maybe I have to hit save again. I don't think so, but I'm going to do it anyways because I'm going to be on the wild side here. And I've got new Blender Brush right here. And this is going to save inside of the Philogix PBR Painter Pro folder that attaches to Blender. So you've got it all the time. Anyhow, guys, working on this. Can't wait to show you I'm done. And if you have not picked up Grid Modeler or Philogix, go ahead. I do get a tiny little kickback from the Philogix. It's really not much. But if you want to pick it up, I have also got a full, more in-depth course on the Blender market for the cheap. And so go check that out as well. Links in the description. Smash that subscribe, smash that like on the way out. And as always, I appreciate everybody watching. If you've got any requests, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.